Hey everybody, I'm Chris. This is my 2002 Bluebird bus. I've been building it for the last three years. I'm gonna give you a quick tour. So right now you are at the very front of the bus and right when you come in, you have a pullout couch with storage underneath. On the other side here is my first office area. This is actually a RV chair. Um, I sold a 2008 Class A RV when I first uh, got the bus and the new buyer wanted to get new seats so I used this swivel seat so it can face this way for this office area. Then also if I have a passenger it swivels around they have a lap seat belt and then they can face out the front so it goes forward and back and then moving a little bit further this is my main office area. This is where I spend most of my time in the bus. I have a 27 inch iMac right here. It's on a wall mount. It's just an Amazon Basics. Uh, it's been working really well. And then to secure it when I'm driving, I just have a T-nut and I lock it down right here so it stays solid and doesn't move as I'm driving. Also have a dry erase board right behind that just for all my most important tasks for the day. And uh, just got an office chair and typically I just put a propane tank right in between here. As I'm driving, it keeps it locked and steady right in there. But like I said, uh, this is the, the main spot for the bus for me. I built this bus to be completely off the grid, be able to go to BLM public land, go out and work, do my thing, and then go out and explore the local area, go hiking, go running, any of that stuff. So moving a little bit further back, uh, this is the main food prep area. All the butcher block in here is inch and a half. Got it from uh, Lumber Liquidators. And actually underneath here, so this pops up and there's a five cubic foot uh, chest freezer in here. So that's deep freeze storage. Uh, definitely wanna go back to Alaska. I like spending time up there, be able to put a lot of fish up there and bring down to the lower 48. And on top, I have my Berkey water filter. This is where I get all my drinking water from. This is a three and a half gallon. It's been working awesome. I absolutely love this. And if you're looking for a filtration system, you can do the, you know, under counter, you can do the infrared, but I really like this, uh, this particular sy system and, uh, and setup. Up above the office area, I have storage up here. Typically it just holds a lot of my camera gear. This is my gimbal, my drone, tripod, uh, microphone for voice recording um, on this side is more like activity type stuff more camera gear as well but you know my running backpack that holds my water uh, this storage has been really nice as you can tell this is a wide open area for a school bus I did a 21 inch roof raise on this particular bus and having this extra storage up here that's a little bit further back it's kind of small but it's great for you know if you just need something real quick for example if I need the tripod for something just got it right there and it's very easy to see what you're trying to get to it's open face i've never had any issues with anything falling down up there and i've really enjoyed it i also have hue lighting system it's controlled by an app so if i don't want to use my my led lights up top i can turn this guy on change his colors you know if watching a movie be able to change the colors in here it's actually pretty cool and then up above as you can see we have vintage maps west from transcend existence uh, he had those, he's going to use them for his bus and he ended up not using them. So he gave them to me, just Mod Podge these guys up here. Um, really like the aesthetic and the look. When I first had the bus, I actually just had spray foam up there for so long. And it's so nice to actually have a ceiling, uh, up there and it ended up going, well, the original plan was to use the maps all the way through, uh, but it ended up going with the same kind of grayish whitish paint on the side, which gives a really nice contrast as you come in and the maps go all the way through the bus, the whole length of the bus. And then moving a little bit further back, we have the kitchen area. Um, this is one of the things in the design of this bus that I was very surprised with how well it turned out. This is actually the cornerstone of the kitchen. What I mean by that is I found this on Craigslist. It's like a 50s, 60s vintage camper uh, four burner stove. Uh, it's ran on propane and it's stainless steel. And from that, that's where I decided to get the stainless steel apron sink and the stainless steel uh, Maytag fridge. So this has worked out awesome. I've never had any issues with it. Typically cook every meal in here, especially when I'm in BLM public land, just cooking all my own meals. The oven works great. You know, those that live in RVs or if you're considering it, the ovens, they're a little bit 
difficult to get used to. Uh, but once you get them down, uh, you're good to go. As I mentioned, I have an apron sink here. Uh, this is a Ruvati sink. And the reason I went with such a big sink is water preservation. So I'll let the dishes uh, pile up. And then as I'm washing dishes, I reuse the water. And that way you're able to conserve water. Basically, you know, you pick up a dish, you clean it, and then all the rinse water goes down to other dishes and you can just reuse that water and then just rinse off. Then just upper cabinet storage right here. This is gear area up here. This is where my Wi-Fi device lives. So I have a pep wave system that takes two cell phone SIM cards. I just get the grandfathered plans from eBay. Uh, what that means is basically they're the plans from 2004 through 2008 or so where it's truly unlimited data and you can rent them anywhere from 80 to 150 dollars a month so i'll get you know my phone has verizon so i'll get an at&t card and a t-mobile card both unlimited and what that pep wave system does it has a booster up top on my roof deck that basically brings the cell signal in, then it repeats it as a Wi-Fi signal within the bus. So I have Wi-Fi within the bus and a guest network. So with the guest network, what I can do if other nomads are around, they can jump on the guest network and then I have a Wi-Fi signal within the bus that I'm able to use. And like I said, it's unlimited and I do a lot of video uploading and downloading. So that's been really awesome on the road. Then upper storage right here, just, you know, your typical stuff, plates, Ended up going with uh, stainless steel plates and that's been working out really well. This is just an Amazon pickup. Um, just fits the aesthetic of the bus. They don't rattle, they're not gonna break. It's been a great addition having these stainless steel plates and I think they were like 16 bucks for four of them and they've been holding up really well. Just a bunch of food storage and like I said, things that you grab uh, quickly. Just a little storage box with, uh, with all my supplements toothbrush, toothpaste, sub, you know, workout stuff. And moving back, piece of art that I got off of eBay, just kind of ties into the aesthetics of the blacks, the grays, the subtle blues that are in the bus. This is my residential fridge. Um, if I could do it over again, I probably would go with something smaller. As I mentioned, I like to spend a lot of time out in BLM public land. And the idea behind it is go to Costco, stock up, and then be able to park out in the middle of nowhere for a month, month and a half and not need anything. But what happens is within that month, month and a half, things end up going bad, you know, like your salads, greens, fruits. Uh, so if I could do it over again, I probably would go with something a little bit smaller and then actually have a pullout pantry right here just with uh, quick grab items. But I really do enjoy this, this fridge. It's been working great. The power consumption isn't too bad. Um, I'll talk more about the solar later, but the solar capacity in this bus uh, makes this feasible. So it's not necessarily a power draw, it's just a space. I guess it has unused space just because it is a little bit bigger and you can't really stock that much stuff, you know, for that month, month and a half window that I was originally going for. But the uh, golden triangle, again, this is something that just happened as we were designing the bus. You might notice the, uh, the sink is a little bit of angle here. So as you're cooking, as you're doing food prep, you just have everything you need right here and it's worked out uh, fantastic and another advantage of having the the sink like this is the water heater is actually uh, back below here and i went with an electric water heater i'd definitely go with a propane if i could do it over again i thought my solar would be able to handle that during the summer it absolutely can but the electric water heater you know draws around 1200 watts and it takes about half an hour to really get the water all the way hot and it's just a big power draw in the winter so the angle of the sun and everything makes it a little bit more difficult. Uh, but if you are considering electric water heater, I would advise against it unless you want to run a generator all the time. So before we move out of the kitchen, I do have storage underneath the stove. Um, just a lot of baking goods, um, some pots and pans. Underneath here, just have my trash. Um, went with a double can setup. Uh, eventually I'd love to do the recycling and have that set up going but right now especially you know out in the middle of nowhere for a month or so trash adds up a lot quicker than you anticipate um, especially if you're using paper plates like a lot of nomads do. Kind of went a different way because I have a lot of water storage in this bus uh, but trash does add up pretty quick so I went with two here. Moving a little bit further back from the kitchen. This is the pantry area. I have all dry goods 
um, spices up top here, um, dry goods a little bit lower, and more dry goods through here, um, you know, just your Instapot, your blender, and then down through here, you know, just have all of my uh, cutlery and the junk drawer. Everybody has to have the, the junk drawer in your rigs, storage containers, all your Tupperware. So at the very bottom, I have all my pots and pans. I don't know how to exactly pronounce this company, but it's Calphalon, I believe, and they have a uh, space saving kit. There's nine pots and pans that came with it, and that's more than enough. I've been very happy with them, and they work really, really well. And then as we get to the back side of the bus, one thing to mention from the front to the back, this is where things kind of close in. I wanted the front of the bus to kind of be wide and open. It's, you know, the space where I spend most of my time. Big windows on all sides, so you're able to see out wherever you're parked, wherever you're camping. And this is just more of like the inviting hangout room when people come to hang out. You know, you got your couch, you got multiple seats. Um, but I mentioned that because I do have this drape, another Amazon find. And what this does, black out the, uh, the back from the front, but also what it does is when I'm heating and cooling the bus, all the heating and cooling is here in the rear. So if it is super hot or super cold, I can just close this and then I only have to heat or cool a smaller portion of the bus. Um, so that has worked out really well. There's just a little basket here that holds that. So moving back from the kitchen, like I said, we're starting to get into the smaller areas of the bus. To my left is the bathroom. To the right is a little like breakfast nook, dinner area. And when I do close off the front to the back, this is where I'll get work done. It's a nice little work area. It's got a couple stools. I'll just sit my laptop up here and I have a power outlet that's right on the table so I can charge my phone or my, my laptop. And it is really nice when I'm able just to bring this out, get some work done, have a nice large window right here, and it's right next to my diesel stove. I ended up going with a Dickinson marine stove. I ended up not going with a wood burning stove because it causes some issue with, with insurance. So if your insurance provider finds out that you have a wood burning stove and a DIY rig, typically they won't cover it. Uh, I've had people that I've talked to that built a schoolie and they were posting images online, their insurance agent sees it and they're like, hey, you gotta take that thing out or we're gonna drop you. So I went with the diesel stove. This is totally fine with insurance. It's been working awesome. This is the Alaska model. It's ran off of this can right here, which is detachable. I just go outside, fill up the diesel. Uh, this is a little bit over a gallon and this on low will run, you know, about, I, th I think it was 1.3 gallons for every 24 hours of operation of this. So it's very efficient. On medium low, it will heat the entire bus. And on low, if I close the drape right there, it will heat this area very nice. So going into the bathroom, we have a sliding door. Up top as I drive, there's a little lock pin that I put in and that keeps the door from rolling back and forth. But this is another little happy accident in terms of color scheme. Uh, got this door before I went with the dark colors of the cabinets and the white of this actually matches the, uh, the wall color. So as we come into the bathroom, I went with a very typical nature's head composting toilet. That's been working great. Typically that lasts me anywhere from month and a half, two months before I need to change it. If you are considering one, there'll be a link down below. For the shower itself, these are all Habitat for Humanity tiles that I got and these, uh, these colorful tiles as well. Somebody at Home Depot forgot to put the new tile order inside and it rained. So they were just liquidating all of their tiles they gave it. Um, I got it pretty cheap. The shower is 32 by 32. It's plenty of room for, for myself. Uh, it's really a luxury to have a shower this big on the road. And also the ceiling still needs to be done, but this is actually what the entire ceiling of the bus was like for the first two years. So it's actually just a little homage to what, what the bus was. And then just storage up above for the uh, quarantine special toilet paper. I'm holding on to this just in case things get too real for us um, on the road. So moving back from the bathroom and the little breakfast nook area, we have steps here. So a couple things here, like I said before, this is a raised roof school bus. And also with this particular uh, school bus, it's a rear engine. So 
you're able to kind of play around with the rear engine cowl. It takes up a lot of room in the school bus. You know, when you're talking about a school bus this size, that's a lot of real estate that you're not really using. So ended up doing a little bit of a raised platform because back behind here, I have the battery storage. And then also underneath the bed next to the engine cowl, I have 200 gallons of fresh water. And again, that goes back into going out to BLM public land, parking for a month or so and not needing to move the bus. So as we come up, this is the whole bedroom area. So tons of storage here, have a closet right here, storage all the way down on this side and storage all the way over on this side. That isn't all clothes. I really honestly only wear probably 10 shirts that I wear all the time and I have the exact same pants besides my work pants. But you know, I have some, some tool storage, I have some camera gear, another junk drawer right up here. And this is just extra storage for anything that I might need. Open face storage on this side. And I have my camera bag, which lives right here. So it's just quick grab anytime I need to grab it real quick. And underneath that, another vintage map with some epoxy over the top. And you know, just kind of keeping with that, with that map aesthetic. And then moving even further back, I have the bed, queen size bed, ended up going with uh, north to south. I was thinking about going side to side with this, but uh, in the end, I wanted the storage underneath the bed and it's a lot easier to raise from this side. So there's tons of storage underneath the bed. There's walk around storage on both sides of the bed. And then up above the bed, um, storage on both sides and little shelves on each side. I do spend a decent amount of time uh, working on my laptop in bed as well. Uh, the main reason for that is the mini split is right above the bed. So I'm able to both be heated and cooled as I work on stuff. Uh, and that just helps out, you know, in those adverse uh, weather environments. And then over here, I have the readout for all my solar gear. So I have a Victron color control display, which goes into a lot of detail of the system. I can track, you know, how much sun's coming in over time. I can compare charts and see, you know, which way I need to park my bus. So for example, I was using that one time to get the exact right angle during winter for the bus for the solar panels. So I was kind of moving around, kind of tilting the bus around, trying to get the best solar to get as much solar in. I have two MPPT charge controllers and a 3000 watt Victron uh, inverter. And that system has been fantastic along with the 900 amp hours of Battleborn battery. Uh, in terms of the power of this bus, it's been amazing. Basically never really worrying about power from time to time during the winter, like I said, I would have to you know hook up to a generator a little bit, but that's mainly just for the water heater. That's been you know the biggest power draw in the, in the bus. Well, thank you for watching everybody. Uh, if you want to subscribe to this channel, uh, we're gonna be having a lot of content on school bus related things, whether it be roof raises. Uh, we're gonna be building a bunch of mini buses for Zeppelin travels. And also I'll be traveling around this for the other YouTube channel, Tiny Home Tours. So hopefully this uh, gave you some insights to my rig. Have a good one.